Hey, I'm Alec. On today's episode of Digital Fabrication Anatomy, I'm going to talk about desktop milling. Before 3D printers were even a thought, there were CNC's, which stands for Computer Numerically Controlled. Now, these machines were the size of a room and were originally designed to supplement the manufacturing process, and it was a research endeavor by MIT in the late 50s. Depending on who you talk to, desktop milling goes by a couple different names. There's 3D carving, there's CNC milling, CNC routing, or benchtop milling. And all of these mean the same thing. You have a machine that is small enough to fit on a desk, and it has a spinning bit that will carve away at material. So you take a variety of materials, anywhere from plastic and wood, all the way up to soft metals like aluminum and brass or copper, you have that clamped onto the work surface, and then it carves it away using a router or a specific spindle like the Carbide Nomad uses right here. And it'll carve away the material until what you have left behind is your final part. Depending on the actual model of machine, it may use a spindle or a router to carve away material. In the case of the Carbide Nomad, it has a spindle which has software controlled speed adjustments to actually determine how fast it's spinning. Whereas something like the Inventables X-Carve or the Carbide Shapoko uses an off-the-shelf hardware tool like a Makita or a DeWalt router to carve away material. And those have an on-off switch on the side of the housing and a speed dial as well, so those you have to adjust and then start the carve, whereas with this, it's all set up through software. In general, desktop mills come in two different form factors. There's small and enclosed, and then there's large and open. The Carbide Nomad and the Z-Morph are some examples of desktop mills that you can easily unbox, set up, and get to carving. The only setup involved really comes from the software, but thanks to the included software for each of these platforms, everything is tuned and set up for the specific machine. So you just have to plug it in, get it installed, and start running. The Inventables X-Carve and Carbide Shapoko are two large format mills that will take some consideration before setup. Now, these are larger than most desks and by design aren't enclosed, so you will need to figure out a dust management system. To make things easy, there are additional dust shoes you can get that can attach to the tool head to help extract all the dust that's generated. These two machines are also kits, so there is some initial assembly and figuring out what goes where to actually get these machines running. There's also a couple different ways to make sure that the workpiece doesn't slip and stays attached to the work surface of the mill. There is a threaded base that has a bunch of inserts so that clamps can be threaded directly into it to clamp down the material. You can use double-sided tape. There's add-on sets to add T-tracks and have clamps that you can add to that to help clamp down your material. Or there's wax fixturing, which you just take some wax, you heat it up with a heat gun, spread it on the bottom of your material, and then you sandwich that onto the work surface. And that stays attached pretty well. And if you carve through it, it won't gum up like double-sided tape will. For actual milling, there's a lot of different options for what you can use. Most machines have standard collets, so you can just get a regular router bit, attach it into the spindle, and start running with it. Now the most common ones you're going to find are end mills, which are mills that have a very flat end. So you can find flat end mills, or you can find ball end mills, or fishtail where it has like a dovetail shape on it. And because you can change out the bits, the resolution of your parts is limited only by the size of the actual part that you're carving with. So you can change out the bit sizes, and the only thing that's going to affect is the time it takes to cut. So if you go down to a smaller one, you can get really fine detail, it's just going to take a little longer to carve your part. Whereas you can change it to a really large bit, and it's going to carve through your thing in half the time, but you're going to lose out in some of that resolution. In terms of material capabilities, they're about the same in what you can actually carve, it just comes down to the setup and the actual build volume. While wax, woods, and plastics are very easy for these machines to cut through, cutting metals will take a little more finesse. Soft metals like aluminum, copper, and brass are basically the extent of these machines capabilities. And even still, you're going to need to carve a lot slower than you would with a wood project to get a nice finished edge. Depending on the project, there are some add-on accessories that can make a huge difference in the success of your project. Like the carbide flip jig, which works by attaching itself to the base plate of the Nomad, and then you can carve your part in one side of the piece that it's holding, flip the whole thing over and it has registration so that it isn't offset when you flip it over, then you can carve the backside. So you're able to do fully 3D models that as long as they don't have overhangs, it'll actually be able to carve them out instead of having to have a flat back. The included software with most desktop mills is designed for the first timer. You have basic shapes and design elements to create basic models. 
but it's all there, you can use it and then export it and start carving it right away. But for the power user, if you already use an industrial level cam software or you're well versed in Fusion 360, you can also use those to create your G-code, export it, and then run it off of these machines as well. You aren't just limited to the proprietary design softwares, you can export and just run it. And so with those, you are able to make complex shapes like a dome and actually carve those out too. A desktop mill is a fantastic addition into your toolset, especially if you're trying to prototype future products or ramp up a small scale production line. In fact, we at Matter Hackers got into the desktop milling because we needed a machine to be able to carve out prototypes for our 3D printer, the Pulse. I hope this video has given you some insight into these fantastic machines and helps give you some ideas for you and your future endeavors. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.